What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be reviewing the new HyperX Alloy Elite 2 RGB keyboard. Recently came out, and HyperX has been doing some really good stuff lately. So if you're in the market for a brand new gaming keyboard, you might want to pick one up. Got you covered today. This is the newest addition to their popular keyboard lineup and has some pretty cool stuff going on, including their very own new HyperX putting keycaps for maximum RGB, the new line of HyperX switches. These are their red linears in this unit. And honestly, look at the last year, HyperX has done some great stuff in the market. So I was pumped to check this out. So first impressions, when I got it unboxed and plugged in, holy hell, this thing is super bright with those shine through putting keycaps. Now, mind you, I shoot at 200 ISO and the lights were still peaking my zebras here. So anyone looking for the brightest of the bright when it comes to keyboards, this hands down is top of the line. Helping that out, obviously, is going to be those putting keycaps. And they've been pretty popular for the last few years. If you're not really familiar with them, they have the, the four sides that are all translucent, so it allows more RGB to shine through. But HyperX has truly been the one company to adopt them and improve them over the years. They're still ABS, but they're a surprisingly thick cap. And for the font up top, it's nice and bold. Kind of has that gamerish look to it. Not too much, though. Uh, but honestly, to me, it looks more than fine. Now, in terms of the goods for some other physical features, on the top left-hand side of the keyboard, you have three buttons. One is for brightness, which has five levels of brightness, three profile switchers, and a G Gamer key, which can let you do things like disable windows and stuff in the software. Then on the top right-hand side, you have dedicated multimedia keys and an aluminum volume wheel. These are always clutch. The media keys, again, are shine through, so at least, you know, be in unison with the rest of your keyboard in terms of lighting effects. And interestingly, if you pop off the caps on the top left-hand side, those three buttons are rubber dome switches. It's not a big deal. They didn't have to be mechanical, but I figured I'd point that out. But yeah, physically, the construction here, this keyboard does look identical to the eye to their 2018 release of the original Alloy Elite RGB. Some other quick notes, that RGB light strip that runs along the top side of the board does add some extra visual flair to it, especially at nighttime, it'll become more apparent since it's a pretty thin strip. Then on the back side, we do have a USB pass-through. You need to have both of the USBs plugged in uh, to take advantage of this, but I would see great for plugging in flash drives, peripherals, wireless dongles, all that stuff. Now the pass-through is unfortunately still limited to USB 2.0, so just keep that in mind in terms of transfer speeds. So when I first unboxed it and saw it, I did think it was plastic until I picked it up, because it's a completely stainless steel frame construction here, so it's definitely pretty solid. I think it comes in a little over three pounds, uh, so it's no, you know, key colt number two, obviously, but still a pretty solid board with no rattle or anything, no flex, definitely sturdy. Some other things to note about the frame, the switches are plate mounted, so you will see the bottom of the red switches. You can't see them if you're like looking at it from an overhead angle, uh, but on the sides and stuff, you know, you will see those red accents peeking out. Not a big deal, but it could trigger some people's OCD if you just don't like the color red. And also, for it being a matte stainless steel frame, that's a really good job of not picking up fingerprints or oils from your hands. Usually you would see them like caked in this, but they did a really good job here at the coating. Okay, so now let's talk about those HyperX Red switches. These are from, like I said before, their newest, you know, switch rollout over the last year or so with the red linears, the aqua tactiles, and the blue clickies. And I even said in my HyperX Alloy Origins core review with their tactile aqua switches that they were by far the smoothest tactiles I've tried. They were even smoother than some reds that I've tried. And these obviously being linears in this unit, they follow suit. Super, super smooth. They have a total 3.8 millimeter travel distance and actuate at 1.8 millimeters. So 0.2 millimeters shorter than most switches out there. And they're definitely light as well at 45 grams. But yes, really big fan of these, very satisfied with their switches. So HyperX, if you're listening, it wouldn't be a bad idea to possibly think about selling these switches on their own so people can buy them and put them in their own custom boards. I think you'd be surprised at how good they would sell on the market because they're very, very good. But yeah, now we'll do a sound test of the HyperX Reds.
So what do you guys think? Are they as smooth as you thought? And as for the stabilizers, as you heard, not too shabby. They don't rattle too much or sound like there is a loose rock in your engine like Corsair boards. So it's really hard to complain here with what they're giving us. Now, while gaming for me, since I'm used to linear switches, no issues with the transition whatsoever. And I always say for viewers who don't know, I'm used to speed switches when gaming at my main setup. But these red linears, man, I just, I love them. I'm, <laughs> I'm being serious. Now, the board doesn't come with a wrist rest, as you can tell, but it does have a slimmer profile overall to the board. So I wasn't too bothered by that. But what's strange is their original Alloy Elite uh, did come with one. So what's up with that? And I'll also say, I really wish I could cram all these features and this look into a TKL layout. Because, you know, for a gaming keyboard, how often are you using a numpad? Yes, maybe for work and stuff, but for a gaming keyboard, do you need a numpad? I am all for the transition into TKL. Who's with me? Then as we roll into the rest of the bullet points as we begin to close this one out, uh, you can also see I have the RGB here kept static. Inside their Ingenuity software, which I do have some gripes with, the RGB effects are all right there to pick from, and the selection overall is pretty limited. But what I do like is the fact that it shows you the animation and colors real time to the software for you. I can definitely appreciate that. And yeah, with these keycaps, RGB just looks insane and very bright, saturated, vivid, all the words. But in here, you can also do things like create macros and reassign the keys to different functions, the usual stuff, you know? But the one thing I don't like with this software is that it's a Windows store exclusive or whatever Microsoft store exclusive. And in order for you to actually save whatever effect that you're currently creating or using, just hitting apply won't actually do it. You have to hit apply, save it to the keyboard, and then assign it to one of the three presets. If you don't do that and you close out the software, it's just gonna go back to the stock rainbow effect. So make sure you save it, assign it to a profile, and then go to that profile to have that effect. It's annoying, they could make it easier and a little bit more straightforward. So in the end, following up from their 2018 release, the new Alloy Elite 2 is a pretty damn good keyboard overall, mainly being you know accentuated by the new putting keycaps and their new own HyperX switches. Those two things together, I think will make this not only a worthy upgrade of that, but it'll make it a pretty good option right now on the market. It does come in at 130 and for that price, you know, it's just like, I, I would just love to see like every gaming keyboard be at like 100 or less. So 130 for this is kind of tough to say because it didn't even include the wrist rest like it used to. So that's a little bit higher than I would like. And in terms of some other cons, there really isn't too much about the board I don't like that I could complain about. It's still with their Ingenuity software. Polish that up a bit, make it easier to export, you know, programs or the effects and stuff like that. But altogether, it's not a bad option whatsoever good features, good switches. In the end, that's what you want from a keyboard, right? So if you wanna check it out, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. And as far as I know, like I said, with the linears in here, they're also gonna have the Aqua Tactiles and the blue clickies available for this unit. So you get to pick between the three and you're gonna love the switches, I guarantee it. That'll wrap it up, guys. Hope you enjoyed this review. If it did and it helped you out, give this video a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed, have a good day.